Hey, good morning. Welcome to Frederick's Workshop. My name is Jason, and today's project, it's really not today, this this project, because it's going to take me a few days to do it. This project, I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's gonna be, I think it's going to be a pretty fun one. So we're going to turn this blue palette, which is not really blue anymore. Sorry for the shadow. It's kind of dark outside. This blue palette into this sweet gun rack. Check it out, guys. Enjoy the video. Okay, so I don't have any plans printed out. I was going to print this, but uh, that's a lot of ink to take up a whole sheet of paper. So, I'm looking at hopefully about 25 inches across, 12 inches down. And then, I know that the palette outside, if I can get it to cut the two ends off the palette and keep the middle piece where it's, you know, the middle spline nails, get that out and take his nails out, that would be awesome. But I don't think I can do that. So I'm going to have to cut it into two separate boards. So I'm going to have to join them down the middle. And butt joint to butt joint, I mean, it's just going to hang on the wall. It should be okay. But I'm thinking just for fun season learning is doing, like, this board here will be like a finger joint right through the middle there. So that's what I'm thinking about doing since I need to make a, a box anyways. And I'm making a finger joint jig, so we'll try it on that. And then, so, I've got to get these these boards here. Put a frame around it, which I'll add some, it'll be a standing up frame. So this will be set down inside there a little bit. So i got to get a frame. And then two little holder things made out of the same pallet wood. To put here and then this down here are those little plastic white salt shakers that you see in like fast food joints so I'm gonna see if I can go steal some from somebody and then build a little shelf there as the ammo and then of course once I finally get it oops, sorry I'm gonna make a little probably out of wood as well engrave it I may make it may use some Osage just because of the yellow but you know, engrave on there, you know, first confirmed kill, and then epoxy inlay, the actual first kill. So, that's the idea. Let's see how well it turns out. So I've got a pallet buster, but it does not like these pallets. These are just too damn sturdy. So, I would use my circular saw. But it's still, it's not even 7, it's right at 7 o'clock in the morning. It's too early for a couple neighbors and the daughter and the wife over here. So I'll just grab my jigsaw, I think, and zip right along the, the board. And then do the same thing over here. And then do the same thing over here. Okay, so I broke down the pallet. I got eight of these and some of those. These are a little bit wider, but it comes out to 17 inches this way, but only 24 this way right now. And as you can see, I need to clean up these edges. So I'm going to take them to the miter and just trim one side just zip, and then figure out how long I can make them and put a little stop block up on my miter saw to cut them. So I just went inside and measured. The gun is less than 22 inches and this is 22 and 3 quarters. So if I overlap this by half an inch with my box joints that I'm going to try and cut. I need to clean this all off first, but with my box joint, that makes this 22 and a quarter. 
So I'm only going to do, of course, I haven't only had a box joint jig set up yet. So I'm in the process of making that. I'm only going to do one, of course, fit it together. Make sure it works, the box joint. Then lay the gun on top of it, this, just the one set, and see how it works. So for my first try of setting this thing up, those things are tight. Now, see a huge gap here and here? Because if I didn't, I mean, I could probably beat it together and squish it together better. That will work for the base. So I'm going to set you up here and let you watch a few of them. All right, well, I'm having little issues with the box joint there. As you can see, it's not closing in. We've got some serious gaps there, so yeah. I'm hoping maybe just squeeze them together will help. And as I play it a little bit more, I'll refine it. But, so let me scoop this up here a little bit. So I've got that much space on this side and that much space on this side. So it should be plenty because these will build a ridge around it like this and like this right here. So that should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get at least two more sets of these done. There's one set, there's two sets, and there's three sets. There's three sets that I need. So I'm going to take these in because it's too cold outside. Actually, I'm going to clean that up and I can start the glue out here. At least put them. I can glue them out here. So let me get this cleaned up and we'll get them in and the gluing. I may have missed the footage so I'm gonna hurry up and do this here. All it is glue, spreader, glued all the box joints here for each of them and then used my awesome mallet, thank you Gary, to talk these things nicely and to make sure they fit good. Alright well this is not very thick. It's only half inch three yeah, about half an inch or so I don't think that's very thick for my first kill to be in there especially whenever I give it a little sanding I gotta level some stuff out so it's gonna thin it down just a tad but not much so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is put a plywood backer behind it it's about a quarter inch thick so that'll give me about three quarters of an inch ish which will be a little bit thicker and that should be thick enough for my first kill inlay technically I believe you shouldn't do well this is gonna be it should be okay because I'm going to I'm not going all the way through with my data stack like all the way through the hole like you know like down the center somewhere like this I'm just gonna nip the tip off there so it should be good <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, now we got one flat edge. So I want to bring it in just a tad. Take it in an eighth of an inch. And then buzz the other side. Whew. Dirty, freezing. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Got that blade there. Get the blue view out of the way. Move the other way around if I need to make a spot for you guys on the wall. <clears throat> okay, that side's a little screwy still. But that side looks awesome. So take these guys in a hoose and glue them up. bad boys up now. We wait for it to dry. So while the inside's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with these guys. These ones. Um, hmm. I don't know if I like that edge on that one. But well, I think it goes in the back. It's not too bad. Or up at the top or down at the bottom. Somewhere you don't see it towards the back. Who cares? So, I'm going to send these through. Get them all the same width. Clean up these edges, this edge, and this edge. Get these all cleaned up. Um, and then I might send it through the miter saw to clean up the, just the tips. Um, I'm not so much worried about um, all of them being the same length when they're done, like those aren't. Um, I don't really care because it's going to be the border around, so I just got to make that work once I get to putting the border around. So I'm going to do this off camera, but I'm just going to do the same thing. Send these through, clean up the two edges. Um, I will say, I noticed whenever I, because I'm starting the editing already on the previous one, I sent the other ones through. See these guys dangling when I'm reaching over? Yeah, it's still got a foot-ish between here and the blade. Tuck these things into your hoodie. Remove them completely. Don't let them dangle. You don't want to get caught up in that. That was an awful close there. But uh, yeah, tuck these in. Now they won't get stuck. All right, let's get these trimmed. I've got enough around those edges there where that'll fit in there nicely. It's probably going to go about like that high. So let me just... should work right there and there so that may not be too bad so I'm not sure I like the depth here well that won't be too bad because I'm going to put the this piece is going on another sheet of plywood similar to such work yeah uh, I got another project for this here but anyway that this is going to sit on something like this and then so that'll raise it up a quarter of an inch so now I need to finger joint these guys, these ones. Outside pieces are in the hoose drying because it's just 40 degrees in here in the shop. So now I get to have the fun of just sanding the bejeebas out of this piece. So I'm just going to grab my orbital, start with some 80, and just go to town. We'll skip all that for you because everybody knows how to sand. So sand, sand, sand. 
these four are now dry, got them glued up. Um, so now let's put you up here. So now what I need to do is I think make these box joints to form the, the frame around. So. <clears throat> I need to sand these guys down actually. Sand these first because that'll thin them down some from making these box joints a little bit. So sand the glue off of these guys. Get them nice and smooth. Get the glue squeeze out off there. Okay, so I cut the box joints on this this corner and this corner, but not these yet, these corners yet, because well it's too long. These are the same length, so the tops and bottoms are the same length, which is perfect. So I got that done. So I put this together, sort of, here, stood this up on end, put it up against the edge of this, and this on there, and then drew a line right here, uh, right there, you can kind of see it, right there. So I can cut this to that length, I did the same thing over here. So cut these to length, and then I'll start these box joints. Okay, all the box joints are cut. Now I need to take the dado stack out, put the regular blade back in, and the riving knife, so I can cut this down to size first. <clears throat> which is going to be quarter inch all the way around bigger than this. So I'm going to measure this, put a draw, and then use one of the, whatever the straight edges are to get that assembled. As you can see, all these boards are tater chipped pretty bad, but at least it's tater chipped the same direction. So I'm hoping. If I put a ton of glue on this, actually I'm going to put it on the back of this, and then lay this down on there, <clears throat> clamp it along the edges, I only have those three, that one, this one, so three, six clamps to clamp around that. Alright, so I got this ready sort of. Set this to a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now let's blast this full of glue. Get off there. about to put this. There we go. Okay. Now, let's we'll scrape it out of the way. Set this on top of here. Get a screw ready. I'm going to come in. Make sure I come in the spots where I know nothing is going to Nothing is going to uh, hit it. So I'm just going to zip this guy in here.
feel like I should want with longer screws. We'll see how that holds. It's clamped all the way around. So we'll see how it goes. So this is dried. It's been glued and sitting in there for almost a day. I'm just going to leave it in the clamps for now just because it's still tater chipped. Should be fine, but I'm just going to leave it in the clamps. I'm going to get the four edge pieces and then cut the groove to accept this lip right here. <clears throat> So hopefully whenever I put it in the groove, it'll I can get it to squish it and fit and straighten out. Alright, send it through once. Got one groove. About to send it through a second time. And that should give me enough to fit in there. So send it through the second time. All this way. So actually I'm just gonna flip it this way so I can see them. And then we'll put it back down here. sure I get these little pieces out of the slots there like that one and that and then we'll bring it back over here and see if we can get to work on this here so let's lower this back down I'm not gonna film this part of here because it's gonna be a lot of cussing and battling and trying to figure this out so I'm just gonna get this done but all I'm gonna do now is put these sides on here reason it's going to be so bad of course is because those grooves are straight and this is far from it so this has been drying for a day I'm just gonna let it sit for a while longer in these strap clamp thing here because now I need to find that piece of there it is take this guy Cut it in half and then make the actual holder. So I'm gonna just use Jonathan's truck here. I think it's gonna actually be like that to hold the actual gun. So I'm gonna use the cardboard to make a template because that piece of cardboard is smaller than this so I know if I cut this in half this piece of wood will be big enough to do the rack or the holder part so I'm just gonna play around with this cardboard here and draw out how I need it to look all right well cut these grooves because that's where the gun will sit down in there. And they're both about the same. So I'm just going to use the bigger one of the two. Throw that one away. Oops, this trash can. And use this. Because that will be plenty big enough. So. I want the grain to be going this direction. So in, in these little spots here. If it's this way. Then that will be really thin and flimsy. But if the grain goes this direction. Then it will be stronger. So. I'm going to take it like such, so that'll be good. Seems like this board might be a little, a little wobbly, but I want to clean it up first, sand it, straighten up the edges on here, and uh, cut it in half. All right, you can kind of see that blue line in there. So the blue tape, super glued together. So then I can take this. Put this on here, and the only thing I'm going to really do is trace out this 
notch cut that out and then I don't know exactly this will be this thick on this side roughly then over here I'm just going to kind of swoop it in something like this Let's start cutting this out this as you can see still two of them I haven't pulled them apart yet because I'm shaping them both the same so I'm thinking that doesn't look too bad kind of feels like it sticks way out above here but I mean, that's only so that's how it's gonna have to be so it should be I mean that's gonna be plenty sturdy enough to hold that little the gun but <clears throat> so that one will go here ish and the other one will go here ish so with here I got plenty of room for my salt shakers here. Hope that's deep enough. And then with this one here, there's plenty of room for the first kill stuff here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna clean up that part there inside right in here. I don't know how yet. Um, but for this I just bandsawed it, broke a bandsaw blade, replaced bandsaw blade, continued working. And then used my sander to sand this edges here. Okay, so I'm gonna bust these apart best I can. So I'm gonna have to get something in there to get those apart. The blue tape, yeah, it's starting to split there. Yeah. I need to split that way. Alright, I'm use this project tool. Probably cut my hand open. Tapes on there good. I probably put too much super glue on there. <clears throat> too much CA. My bad. Hey, what's going to park? So I went a little overboard, I guess. All right. So now this go about here. Somewhere. And this one will go here somewhere. Now it's not gonna stay right there like that because so I need I want this front one to stay in this position. So I gotta kind of center it off of this one. And then I'll take my pencil. <coughs> Mark, where is that? going to file these out, get those cleaned up, and I'll be back once I get that cleaned up a little bit. Alright, these are glued and screwed in. Um, I just put, I just drilled some holes, some pilot holes there, and this going this way, so I know because I drew the lines where I want it to be, 
and then <clears throat> I put it up on its side, put the glue on there, held it into place, threw a brad nail into the back of it, and then drilled into these through those pilot holes, and then put some screws in. So that's where we're at right now. Those are just now drying. Um, I don't have my salt shakers yet. I need to go get some. I need to run to the Dollar Tree sells them, but I, wanna, I might stop by and like grab some lunch somewhere. See if I can steal some if anybody has any. See if they'll fit right there. I've got other stuff going. So, for where the first kill is going to be, somewhere here, but I need to put the actual little plate that says first kill. So, for that, I'm going to use a piece of this. No sage. I'm going to skip this whole section here on how I do this because I can't guarantee I'm going to do some safe stuff. So, I'm just going to try to get a chunk of this that's going to be big enough to make um, the little, like, a gold bronze badge type thing. So, there's the piece that I'm going to use. It's still got some pit down there. So, I'm going to start on this side of it and do first kill and then somehow... Make it look pretty. And then this is, you can see that. There you go. That's just, of course, just drawn on pencil. Um, I'm going to use my Dremel to engrave the first kill. And then these, those little hole that right there, just be pilot holes. That's where I want to put some pilot holes, put some screws, and screw it into this board. And then those little half circles, I'm going to, once I get it engraved, I'm going to send it through the bandsaw, cut it off as much as I need, because I don't need it that thick, and, you know, cut it down thinner, and then take it over to the drill press, and if I have to sand it, that would be best, because I, I don't know about using a drill, to try and drill out, but I'll sand down the corner to make it round and look all pretty like a little brass plaque. Yeah, here's a rat. I got this. What I did is I, I couldn't get the going inward, um, going like this on this thing by taking it and trying to push it up against here and making it curve inward. So I ended up just rounding it off right here. But um, so while it was still attached to the block, I engraved this, spray painted it red. And then just sand it off the leftover so it was the engravings are the only thing that's got the, the red in it. Taped it down, some blue tape, drilled these four holes, pilot holes here, and then uh, just peeled this piece of tape up so it just folded down, added some glue, added a little bit of CA glue to where these holes are, and then took these little nails are nails for like picture hanging bracket things that are you know, little picture hangers, and because they're too long, I just use my some snips to cut the end of it off, and then carefully hammer these down with a pin punch, just so I didn't damage the the looks of them. So I didn't want to beat those up too bad. All right, so I used you, that camera, not you people, to trace around that right here. So this is where I'm going to cut this out. I'm using a brad point so I can kind of eyeball the best I can to try to get it right in that corner. And then I got some bench cookies propped up a little bit, so I'm going to get down into and drill into my workbench. That would be kind of shitty. Okay, now I'm going to use, I think, my jigsaw, if I can find it, maybe, and do the connect the dots there. Okay, so what I did was drilled four holes here, 
jigsaw and then use my files to smooth it all out and then hot glued and taped a piece of cedar back here any random wood just so I can fill barely fill this with epoxy just a little bit not much and then I also glue these to the salt shakers to sit in right here so just a couple more pieces I cut down and glue it in so I'm going to mix my epoxy and fill it just a tad into here probably only to where the top of that plywood is right there you can see the line alright so I put 15 ml of epoxy in there let it harden and in the meantime there we go I got my first kill wifey has said hey there's a wasp in the bedroom so I went and got him now it did take like five six seven twenty shots I don't remember how many I ended up shooting because of the hard exos exoskeleton these guys got uh, bug assault does okay it at least knocks it down to where you can get to it and stomp on it if need be but so I laid it in there and then poured another 15 ml of epoxy after the first set hardened so now when it was uh when he's in there he doesn't sink all the way to the bottom he the wasp doesn't sink all the way to the bottom go all the way through that's why I wanted that first layer of 15 in there just to give a nice base coat and then I got another 15 that he's in now so he sits in that because the other option or bad thing could have been is if I filled it all the way up it might have floated to where he's not in the center of it so once this coat or layer of uh, epoxy hardens I'm gonna put and fill it up the rest of the way and there it is completed ignore this so we got Pallet wood turned into all this. Everything is pallet wood minus this piece right here, which is a piece of a sage from a tree out there. Yeah, a tree outside. I cut the branch off of. Behind this is a piece of plywood, just to help out. And everything else is from that blue pallet. So we got ammo, the gun, their little sticker logo, and the first kill. There's the little first kill sign and. Well, there he is. Alright. Thanks for watching everybody. Like, subscribe, and thanks a lot. A link down below for in my uh, Amazon affiliate store for everything that I used for this thing here and other stuff from other projects. Thanks.